I'm just sitting around uh, thinking about life and what it all means. Um, I, I really get upset at, uh, at life. Uh, what we're going through as a nation. Um, it, to me, it feels like bondage in Egypt, once again, going through and living with the Biden crazy, lunatic, evil administration. For those people that can't see how evil Biden, those demon Democrats, uh, Democrat administration is, uh, I feel sorry for you. I don't care. You know, I've lost like 20 uh, subscribers. I don't care. I don't care if I lose a thousand subscribers, you know. If you people don't wake up, you're not going to have a nation anymore. The reason that the, there's a blackout on on going into the borders and taking photos of the borders, as far as the media or anybody's concerned, is because Bidens are trying to hide what's going on at the borders. Doesn't that make sense? Even the the media that was so biased against Trump is realizing how how untransparent the Biden administration is. Of course, there's the press secretary that uh, Jan or Jen uh, that uh, is uh, propaganda for the Biden administration that lies out of every corner of her mouth every day or five days a week. I don't know what she does on Sunday. It's so sad. I mean, it's funny. If it wasn't so sad, it'd be funny. Jen lies and sticks up for the Biden administration every day. She lies for him. She covers up for him. She makes excuses up for him. They're about as transparent, this presidency, this administration, about as transparent as my Rarian is. The reason that they don't allow media in to see what the border situation is, is because they're embarrassed of it. They know damn well it's a crisis, but they don't admit it. It's a difficult situation. And who made it a difficult situation? It's the damn Democrats and Biden. Oh, the reason he failed go three times going upstairs into Air Force One, no one else fell. Going up those stairs. The reason he fell is because it was windy. Other presidents went up the staircase when it was windy. They didn't. They didn't fall. Oh, it was because it was slip, slippery. How about it's because Biden's weak and he's brittle. He's not, he's not, he's just not thinking properly. Calling, calling Vice President Harris the president and all the things that he, that he does and people just shrug it off like it's nothing. I cannot believe how scary it is to me that in, in case China or whoever decides to go to war with us, that we have to depend on Biden, such a weak, evil administration, to save our butts. Don't you think, wouldn't it be nice to have a real man in there, a real president in there that cared about us? We've got, we've got little Biden, Joe Biden in there. Sickening. I probably won't do uh, many videos anymore. I don't know. I don't know if I will or not. Uh, I've been doing it for a long time. I have nearly 400 videos. And uh, I don't think anybody cares. I mean, there's there's a few people that are nice that leave 
uh, comments that are nice. Uh, Sarah, uh, you're one of them. And there, but it, anyway, there's a lot of uh, people that are nice. But, you know, I mean, I get maybe, you know, 80 to 100 people or something to look at my videos. That's nothing. Some people get thousands of people, like the first day, look at their stuff. And, you know, you don't want to look at an old guy talk about God and, and you know, and just life in general. No, you, you know, people want to hear uh, about somebody talking about sex, you know, somebody talking dirty. Maybe, maybe some uh, woman that's uh, trying to play the drums or uh, play a keyboard or something that's that, that doesn't know crap. But most of most of the people want to want to look at people talking about sex, talking dirty, videos, you know, against God, just fun stuff, baby, you know. There's, there's some videos that I have to admit are funny. Uh, they're about people that have a thing that they squeeze or there's a cup that they have a straw in and it makes a farting sound. Sounds like you're farting. And these guys go into Walmart or uh, just, you know, downtown somewhere. And when people are walking by... They act like they're farting. And then there's somebody else that's holding a camera. It's got a hidden camera that's taking the uh, film of the people, not film, but video of the people that uh, that heard the fart sound. You know, their expressions, whether they're laughing or giggling or, or whatever. And it is funny. I have to admit that is funny. What's not funny is like when they're in Walmart or a Home Depot and they're going past a person or next to a person that's an older person. That's an old person. And then they do that right next to them and, and, and they, they, the people jump. It's not cool. It's not funny to have to, to scare the shit out of an old person. They could have a heart attack. It's not funny. It's not funny to scare an old person. Younger people can take it. They can shrug it off. Older people, it's scary for them. It's not funny. There's a there's an also a guy on there that uh, does uh, fart uh, videos. They have hundreds of thousands of viewers. You know. Anyway, good old Ron, you know, he's lucky to get a hundred a hundred people watching it and and good grief as far as having positive comments or or, or not uh, to have people go through the effort, go through the effort and it takes I don't know a quarter of a second, half a second, you know, to to, to push the arrow that, that goes up, you know. Oh, hell no, you can't do that, can you? Even if you like, you know, the, some of the things I say, you can't do that. People can't do that. So, anyway, uh, I probably won't do much anymore. I don't know. I, like I said, I appreciate the people that have been nice to me. But uh, I'm sure that most of you people would rather watch uh, the things about sex and uh, just, you know, just just things, you know. Um, I don't know. I, I I don't understand people. I really don't. But anyway, there there was a guy that was in uh, Home Depot or Walmart that uh, that there were some black women that he went up next to, and then he he did this farting noise thing. And they kind of they kind of jumped, but then, then they had a 
a video. The, the guy that did this had a video on Eddie Murphy or somebody that was doing some comedy strip or some stand-up comedy somewhere. Uh, could have been Chris Rock. And they had the pictures of the black women there. And then, then they uh, put in this little clip. Hey, nigga. Hey, nigga. Hey, nigga. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. That that is so racist. It's so unfair. So unkind. You know, I don't like I don't like people making fun of other people. It really upsets me. I don't care if they're black or white or old or whatever it is. Just don't make fun of people. Whether whether they're short or whether they're crippled. Maybe they're deformed. Maybe they look odd. Maybe they have a big nose. Maybe they have big ears. Don't make fun of them. Anyway, um, that's my little two cents. I, uh, I just, I get so upset at people that are, <clears throat> that don't care about God in their life. They couldn't care less about living the, the golden rule or living the Ten Commandments. Just, you know, just doing kind deeds to other people. What is wrong with you people? What in the world is wrong with some of you people that you can't, that you just can't be loving? Be loving to your brothers and sisters. And also, how about being loving to your pets and animals? You know, I, I, I love, I just love animals. I really do. I, I love them. I believe in God. I know there's a God. I see God in a lot of things. I mean, I know there is a God. It's like, it's like a light bulb. I know there's a light bulb on my lamp. And when I turn the lamp on, the rays and the light from that light bulb fill the room. Like God, God's God's real. You know, he he's he has a physical form, but his love and his spirit and it fills the world. Like a light bulb, when you turn it on, it the rays are all over the room, like the sun. But I see God in a lot of things. I can see God in watching birds outside and listening to, listening to them chirp and sing. I can see God in that. I can see God in every spring when the tulips come up, when all the beautiful flowers come up, even dandelions. You know, I've got thousands of dandelions in my yard. I know they're weeds, but they're still a creation of God, aren't they? When you when you look at a dandelion, I mean it's yellow. I mean it, it's 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 not an ugly it's not an ugly thing. Oh, that's a dandelion. It's a weed. We got to get it out of our lawn. Well, yeah, I guess you do. But a dandelion turns into a butter, or not a butter ball, but a, a ball of whatever you call it. Thousands and thousands of, you know, th th these little things in a ball. I mean, that in and of itself is a marvel when you look at it. A spider's web is a marvel. Years ago, I went out to my side yard just overnight, I went out 
you know, I mean, the day before there wasn't anything there. And I know there wasn't anything there the night, you know, because I was out there watering the lawn before uh, night fell. But the next day I went out and there was the most magnificent, talk about Charlotte's web, there was the most magnificent web that I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it was magnificent. It was huge, intricate. To think that a spider or a couple of spiders or whatever did this during the night. It was so intricate and so intelligent, so beautiful. I mean, you can see God in almost everything in nature, animals. I can see God I can see God in a little puppy playing with a rag. I can see God in the eyes of a cat. I mean, if you look hard enough, you can see God or parts of God you just have to look at it. I, at times, I've had like bananas that have gone rotten on the counter or whatever in the kitchen. Left them for days or whatever. Maybe, maybe I was on vacation, came back and there was rotten bananas or vegetables in the sink. I didn't... Uh, Put down the disposal, whatever. And there's just hundreds of gnats and and different, you know, different gnats and I can't different different little flying things. And you think, grief! I've got to get rid of this thing. You know, what a bunch of pests. And so I have. I've got rid of the fruit or the bananas or whatever it is, and you know, uh, couldn't care less. Couldn't care less what happens to these. Nats and hope, I, I just hope that most of them go out with the the sack, you know, the, that I, or the bananas I put in the sack or whatever. But in the past, or if you have, if you see hundreds and hundreds of these little pests, you don't like them. You don't like them, but you get one of them. And I do it almost every night. I get, I get one of them. I, I fish them out of my the water container of my bird's uh, water dish might be, you know, one that's laying on their back and they're they're drowning. They they're helpless. I fish them out. Of, I've told you this before. I fish them out with my finger, blow on them, and until you know, until they're dried off, then they, you know, they wiggle their wings and then they fly off. You know, I love that. So you get hundreds of these little pests. You don't care about them. You get one of them. And you realize that they're intelligent. They have feelings. Sounds stupid, I know. They have feelings. They need help. And, and they're an individual. This one is different than this one. Yeah, they look the same, but they're different. This one is different from the 200 that was on my bananas. They look the same, but they're different. So you get hundreds together, and they're just pests. You get one together, and look at it, and study it, and help it. It's special. I know. I know this old man's crazy. Whatever. <laughs> I'll leave by uh, saying, uh, giving you an idea that you probably haven't thought about before because most of you are morons. No, I don't mean that. A good percentage of you are, but not, not most of you. If I had done this uh, during my life, I think it would have been a marvelous thing to have that today.
to experience today. And this is, this is what I hope that some of you people will do. Well, first of all, we've talked about it before, or at least I have. When you take a photo of people, of your family, of, you know, your daughter and husband or your grandkids or whatever, write on the back of the photo who it is. Write down who the, thing, who the people are. Because when you die and your kids die and your grandkids get it or your great-grandkids get it, they won't know who the hell it is unless you write it down. So write the names of the people down on the backs of the photos. Takes a little time, but it's going to be worth it in the long run <clears throat> to help, you know, your posterity. But anyway, this is what I would like some of you people to do. People that you meet that are interesting, that made a, a favorable impression on your life at that time, write down their name in a journal. Write down their name and what the experience was. For instance, <clears throat> about... Uh, let me think. About 35 years ago, I lived in Melbourne, Australia, and I went over to Sydney to, uh, well, I, I went over there to an antique show, and at the time, I uh, found a person that had some antique music boxes. I mean, these music boxes were were huge. They had they had uh, besides the regular uh, cylinder that uh, played music. Uh, they had drums and and had a drum and it had different instruments inside the music box. It was incredible. Anyway, so I went over to this guy's house, and he had uh, in one of the rooms in his in his house, he had all these fantastic music boxes, cylinder, discs. I mean, he had all kinds of music boxes, all kinds of 3D stereo optical uh, stands with uh, 3D cards that you can, you know, look at. I mean, he had a, he had a marvelous collection that he'd collect, collected uh, in a lifetime. So I bought a couple of uh, music boxes from him. Yeah, it might have been one. I think I bought, yeah, I bought one from him, one huge music box. Um, believe it or not, I think it was for like $4,500. I mean, it was incredible. And <clears throat> this was like 35 years ago. So anyway, if I had a list of people that I had put down in a journal the names of people and what transpired with that person, why that person was fun to be with, what happened when I was with that person. So put that person's name down and, and the event, what transpired during that visit with that person. So later on in life, you can look at a person's name and then you can look at what happened and then you can in your mind, if you have a mind, you can you can relive that experience. I don't. I I I, don't, I can remember the experience. I wish I remembered his name, but I I don't. But it would be neat to remember his name. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That was Carl. Yeah. Carl. Carl Swenson. Whatever. It, it just helps you in your memory. I mean, there's so many people. When I was on a mission uh, in Australia, there was a old woman that I went that I went to visit with my companion. And uh, her name, her name was, it's, this has been like this has been over 50 years, and I remember to this day, 
I remember her name. Her name was Rose. And I even remember her address. It was 102 Nicholson Road. Don't ask me how I remember this name. I don't, I don't know, but I just do. She was such a special woman. A marvelous woman. You could look into her eyes and they look like a, her eyes reminded me of a, a prophet that we haven't had in our church at the time called David O. McKay. But her eyes were so spiritual. And uh, anyway, we, we uh, talked to her about the church and she said, one day she says, if you want me to be baptized in your church, I'll be baptized in your church. She says, but I don't feel a need to be baptized because when I take a bath during the day, I sing spiritual hymns and I praise God every day. You know, just things like that. And we never did baptize her because we didn't want to obligate her or force her or do anything that she really didn't want to do. But she was a real spiritual woman. She loved God. She did She did some weird things. She did uh, speed writing. I don't know if you know it, ever heard of speed writing. It's where she took a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil and all of a sudden... Uh, her hand with the pen or uh, pen on it, pen or uh, pencil on it, would go. And all these words, all the words would be connected, and then you would go, uh, oh, after she was done, she'd put her, you know, her pen or pencil down, and then you would look at her lines of words, and you'd separate the words, and then you'd read what it said. And she had binders and binders of, of spiritual messages that she got from heaven or from God or whatever. Uh, I had the binders in my hands. I, sh I should have looked. I guess I looked at some of the messages and stuff, you know, but but uh, she, uh, she was an interesting woman. I tricked her one time. I I had to know if she was a phony or or, if, you know, if she was a real deal, I think to a point she was the real deal. But I tricked her one time and I said, I want you to find out if my girlfriend is waiting for me or not. And she gave me the repo report later on that she definitely was waiting for me. Well, uh, the truth was I never I didn't have a girlfriend that was waiting for me. So I tricked her. What does that mean? I don't know. But after 50 years, I still remember her name. And I still remember her address. I don't remember the name and address of anybody else like that. Why her? I don't know. Here, I'll show you a picture of a girl. Uh, I was uh, 19 at the time. This girl was 16 at the time. This is a picture of her. I'll just show you a picture of this girl. She was madly in love with me. And she used to walk in front of my flat or my, my companion uh, and myself. We rented a room from this guy <clears throat> in his house. And anyway, this woman, young woman, I think she's beautiful. She walked by my house every day to go to school with her two brothers. And one day, anyway, one, one day she put this picture inside an envelope with a poem made out to me. And I have, I've kept that photo For, for decades <clears throat> in my wallet. Whatever happened to her, I married her. And then I lost her about 23 years ago. I lost her. 
But uh, anyway, photos, uh, I love photos. I'll show you some uh, photos that I had. I collect, one of the things I do is I collect pictures of children having birthday parties, birthday cakes, you know, sitting around the table with their family and friends celebrating their birthday. Why do I collect uh, children with birthday cakes and birthday parties? Because it's one of the few times in a child's life that they're happy. They're all, most times they're always happy when it's their special day, their birthday. They're a year older. They're so happy they're a year older. They're sitting in front of a beautiful sweet cake and they're surrounded by friends and family and presents. Now, isn't that a happy time? So I collect, I've got hundreds of them, pictures of children with celebrating their birthday because it's a happy time in their life. Uh, what isn't a happy time in my life is I have a bunch of photos that the uh, uh, some mice have got into and started eating the photos. They thought they saw the pictures of the cake and they thought, boy, that looks sweet. I'm going to eat that cake. And they started nibbling away on the corners of my photos, trying to get to the cake and they've ruined my photos. For instance, look at this, look at this sweet little girl. She's so happy. She's so happy. And look at the cake and look at, look at the, what the mice did. got hundreds of photos. Here again, they're trying to get to that cake on the table. I mean, I, I, I can go on and on. I, I mean, I've got a, a, you know, a lot of photos there and a lot of damage thanks to the mice. Anyway, getting back to the photos, but, but write down the name of the person and what the event was, and I guarantee when you're an old person like I am, I'm not old to peer, physically I'm old, kind of old, but but up here I, I'm like 35 years old, you know? But it would be so much fun for me to look at this journal of names, and I think, Oh, what's his name? Who's this guy? And then I would look at what the event was. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. That was a that was a fun night, or that was a fun day, or he was a fun person. I just had a, a thought come to me. Uh, I belong to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, and we went to uh, another area I was in. We were at a uh, a boarding house? I guess it was a boarding house. And uh, there was a guy, strange guy. I don't remember his name. I wish I wish I could remember his name. Oh, his name is George. I don't remember his full name. Only reason, only reason I remember his name is George is because he used to tease us missionaries and he used to call himself King George of Latter Days because that's part of our church's name is Latter Days. But he says he's King George of Latter Days. I mean, he was a character. He was a member of the Assembly of God. And he wanted us to go to church with him one time. So uh, my companion and I uh, went to church with him. And I think they were speaking in tongues or whatever whatever it was. But, uh, but, but he, was, he was an interesting character. But I would love to have a list of people's names and then the, and then the event doesn't it doesn't seem important to you now because you're busy you need to play PlayStation 5 games you know Xbox one or whatever it is you know you, you you don't have time to do such stupid things as to take the time and write a name and what the event was but I guarantee when you're my age you'll be so happy that you took the time out of your busy life to write these things down so you can have some fond memories and remember those people 
again. You're reliving. If you have a brain, you're, you can relive the, that event again. And it'll be fun. It, I guarantee it'll be fun. I pr there's probably 95% of the things that happened to me 50 years on my mission that I don't, I don't remember. I don't ever remember the people's names that I baptized. That's crazy. That's insane. Why? Because I didn't take the time to write those people's names down. I wish that I would have done that. And I'm telling you, if you don't do that, you're a moron. Anyway, that's my uh, half hour plus uh, presentation for today. I don't know how many more times I'm going to talk. Uh, again, thank you, people, for those people that are kind enough to leave comments. Uh, I don't get enough comments. I don't get enough thumbs up to even make this thing worthwhile. But uh, I'm, I'm talking to myself for the most part. I guess I'm talking to myself. And frankly, I like listening to myself. I put on my own videos and li listen to them, baby. Why? I don't know. They're better than listening to some guy talk about sex. Watching some uh, uh, person uh, thinks that they can sing good and they can't. I don't know. Anyway, take care. And uh, try to do the right thing today. Care about people. Care, you, care about your neighbors. Care about animals. And if you see an ant on your sidewalk... Step over that ant. I know you're a big, tough guy, a big, tough person. You can smash that ant to smithereens, baby. Why should you? It's God's creation. Grow up.